Welcome to another time of living the dominion life and living the life that the your father, the king of kings, has designed you to live. Let's pray. Father, we just pray right now that you would open our eyes and our ears and our hearts, Lord, to receive what you would have for us. And let us be eternally changed. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, we're going to continue on today with... I'm going to turn on my microphone see if we can hear this better. We're going to continue on today with um, the way that you should go. And we are on the first section in the instructions, but let's just have a real quick review. We're going over the way that they should go, but we're applying it to ourselves. In the introduction, I'm going to read it to you just as a refresher. It says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art called, and hast professed a good profession before many. 1 Timothy 6.12 Now, don't think twice you are in a battle for your child's soul and your own. The battle is planet Earth. You are the generals in charge. For the battle to be fought successfully, there must be clear lines of separation, a stone wall. The combat zone for most skirmishes will take place in the mind. So the mind must be guarded by the helmet of salvation. Always keeping in mind that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. A battle arises when enemy soldiers enter God's territory for the purpose of fighting for victory your soul or your child's soul. The battle plan must be clearly presented, understood by all, and acted upon in unity. Many Christians give up any outward sign of identity with Jesus Christ, having no clear standard of separation, a stone wall, and enter the world to find pleasure, entertainment, and friendship. God's word is not being clearly presented in many families and churches. And the plan for victory is unclear. Few see the victory to be had as fighting the good fight of faith, living a pure life, separated in a holy life, active in Bible study, prayer, worshiping God, and soul winning. The scriptures tell us in 1 Timothy 6, 12, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold, on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Biblical separation, a stone wall, is clearly taught in God's word. It cannot be different in practice any more than the plan of salvation. Children that are not taught to have a stone wall, or you, the parent, teaching yourself if you were never taught, will have difficulty seeing the battle and that the battle can be won. This child, or yourself, will more likely see their purpose in life is to be one of fighting for the desires of their flesh and esteeming themselves. My recommendation is to read Jeremiah. Isaiah 29, 16 tells us, Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the word say to him that made it, He made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, He had no understanding? We cannot elevate ourselves above God and think we know best. Lucifer did that, and it didn't work out too good for him. Children must learn to sense the presence of a stone wall. And we, as the generals in charge, must know that stone wall. They must sense the presence of that stone wall and clearly define set of beliefs that teach the child not to esteem themselves. Lucifer esteemed himself above God, and we see the outcome of that every day. This biblical stone wall must provide clear cut answers so our children can resist their own fleshly desires by temptation, and remain separate from the world. This stone wall must become a standard, a typical part of 
life in the family. God's word says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. James 4.4. 4. So that was our introduction. It's kind of like a story, but you know what? Your life is laid out as a story when you look back. When you look back, are you going to wish you had a stone wall? So you would be able to clearly understand how to fight the good fight of faith? Then we went into this stone wall from the world is built to teach, train, and set an example. So the stone wall should provide answers like, where can I go? What should I think about? How should I dress? How should I speak? What interests should I have? How should any of these interests be limited? How should I choose my friends? What can I listen to? What can I watch? What should I look at? What should I read? What should my attitude be? What is my purpose in life? What is my purpose in working, talking, playing, eating, all things? What are the basic truths of my faith? Being able to answer these questions and have that stone wall will help us not compromise because we will have that uncompromising, unmovable stone wall. And the stone wall is set up for our protection. First, protection from ourselves and our fleshly desires. Secondly, the stone wall is supposed to be there to protect us from Satan and what he would have for us. And what he has for each one of us is to kill, steal, and destroy. It's supposed to protect us from the world. Then we went into the instructions where we talked about that it's the parent's job. Or if you're an adult, it's your job to teach yourself what God's Word says by reading it and letting the Holy Spirit reveal the truth to you. And it's you as the parent, your job. You have the primary responsibility of teaching your child God's Word. Then we went into several days worth of questions and answers and looking up Scripture to see what God's Word had for us. And we did three lessons with them. Now we move on to the training segment. <clears throat> so let's get into that. The training segment, if you're following along with us, is on page, let me scroll down, 14. Okay? And this is the introduction to that training section. Training is the consistent, diligent application of God's Word to a child's desires, thoughts, speech, attitudes, and behavior. Training involves correction, discipline, and a repetition of what has been taught from God's Word. If you're unsure about how to correct behaviors, we have on the website, just go look for it. They're in alphabetical order, all of the things that we have out there. Click on it, download it, print it out, and it's called Behavior Training Using God's Word. God's Word tells us in Proverbs 22, 6, Train up a child in the way that he should go. And this is not just for he, it's for she too. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. 2 Peter 1, 12 tells us, Wherefore, I will not be neg negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them and be established in the present truth. So this is Peter reminding us to keep remembering and putting our children or those that we are over in remembrance of what is the truth, even though they know it. At least we get distracted and fall by the wayside. Proverbs 29, 15 and 17 says, The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother, bringeth his mother shame. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto your soul. So am I advocating that it's okay to give corporal discipline to your child? Yes, I am. 
Does that mean that I think you should abuse your child and beat them and make them bleed and put bruises on them and treat them poorly? No. God's Word doesn't say that. Continuing on, a parent who is diligent to be a daily example of all that is taught from God's world, word will have a greater influence on their child. Now let me say that again. A parent who is diligent to be a daily example of all that is taught from God's word will have a greater influence on their child. Be ye followers of me as even as I also am of Christ, is what 1 Corinthians 11 1 says. Keep in mind that a clear, uncompromising standard, a stone wall, should be established at home, bending to excuses like, there are only two bad words in this movie. Everybody else at church watches it. It's just a game. Things are different today. We can't be so strict. Ends the wall of separation. The stone wall now crumbles. If this is the case in your home, start now to rebuild that stone wall. One stone at a time. When we bend to excuses, this gives the child an unclear sense of right and wrong along with a lack of discernment in situations where direct command may not apply. Bending to excuses can also establish the world view of situation ethics. Now, moving into lesson one, and we will only do lesson one today. Lesson one, number one says, compromise will result in a desire for the world and the interest in curiosities of a child's flesh will be stirred to find more holes in the wall. For your child's own benefit, there must be no compromising, no doubt about God's plan, and no swaying from the truth. 1 Corinthians 15, 18. Let's look that up. So we're getting into our very first scripture, and this is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and verse, I think I said 18, but I meant 58. Sorry about that. Okay. If you have it, say amen. And if you don't, say wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. You're going too far. You need help? Mm-hmm. All right, so we're getting to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. You almost got there, baby. You just needed to turn over a few more pages. And 58. And 58 is the last verse in that chapter. Okay? So 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So the question says, our labor of the, for the Lord should be done how? How should it be done? Ruthie? Steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Amen. Steadfast. Unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. I mean, when I read that, I'm thinking of the armor of God. Stand firm. Don't move. And you will abound in the work of the Lord. Let's look at the next question. Is your work in the Lord ever in vain, Daniel? What was that? No. No, you're right, it's not. Now, question two says, train your child to be separated in their affections. That means what they like, their fondness, their friendliness with. Strongly encourage and support an interest in the things of the Lord. So, our next scripture is located in Colossians 
chapter 3. So we're in Corinthians, so we need to move over to the right. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, okay? Then chapter 9. So if you get to Thessalonians, you've gone too far. Now I said, and I'm saying Colossians chapter 9, I'm jumping down to Corinthians. So the scripture is actually Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Okay? So everybody find a Colossians? You're having a hard time? That's okay. Just listen then, darling. All right. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2 says, Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Okay? So, what? where should our affections lie? On things above. That's right. On things above. On the Lord. That's right. On what he would have for us. All right? Our next question is, Number three says, to help restrain the desires of the flesh or affections to the ways of the world, we must diligently correct and discipline when their flesh nature rises up. Again, I'm referencing behavior training using God's word. Now, the question for us is, how are we to deal with our body and fleshly nature? Well, let's see what the word of God says. Our next scripture that we're looking at is 1 Corinthians. So we're going to go back to the left. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And we're going to look at verse 27, which is the last verse in that chapter. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Hmm. So what are we, how are we to deal with our own fleshly nature, Naomi? Um, we're supposed, how are we supposed to deal with our own fleshly nature? Mm -hmm. oh. Bring it into subjection. Bring it into subjection. To what? The Word of God. The word. Remember, we're taking every thought captive and subjecting it to the obedience of Jesus Christ. God's Word tells us that if it's not true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, having any virtue and praiseworthy, that we shouldn't think on these things, right? Okay, so let's move down to number four. Discourage excitement and interest in the things or the affairs of this life. How can we please him who has chosen us and our children to be one of his soldiers? Now, let's move over to 2 Timothy, okay? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Okay, so we can't entangle ourselves. So, the answer to this question, um, how about you, Daniel? How can we please him who has chosen us and our children to be one of his soldiers? What is he saying here that we need to do? To renew the mind. We do need to renew the mind, but that's not what the scripture was telling us. And to put up a stone wall. Yes, we're learning to put up a stone wall. Let's look at that scripture one more time. It says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. So, what are we to do? Not to entangle ourselves with the things of this life. That's right. Not to entangle ourselves with the affairs of this life. And a lot of people think that that means sin. But you know what? The affairs of this life is every day living, cooking, cleaning, taking your child to school. God's Word says, don't allow yourself to get entangled with this stuff. It's not important. The only thing that is important is doing what God's Word tells you to do. Living each moment as unto the Lord. Does that mean never to wash your clothes again or never to do your dishes? No, but do it as unto the Lord. But it does mean that if your neighbor could use a meal because they just had a baby or surgery, 
but you're too entangled up in making sure that your kitchen is perfect that you don't even notice the need of the person next door, then you've entangled yourself with the affairs of this life and not with the affairs of God. Scripture to memorize is that verse that we just went over, 2 Timothy 2.4. And I picked that out for this purpose, or this is the purpose that the Lord put it on my heart. Because we can so easily get entangled with the affairs of this life and then find ourselves to be a castaway because we didn't cho choose what is the better. So, be a Mary and not a Martha. Spend your time at the feet of Jesus, not worrying about making sure everybody's fed and everything's done right. Let it go. Your house doesn't have to be perfect. Your car doesn't have to be perfect. But stopping and praying for the one in need, helping feed the poor and set people free from bondage, that's what's important. We need to get our priorities straight and not let them straighten us out where all we want to do is be flat on our back taking a nap because we're worn out. There's, Satan would love to keep people who view themselves as good, very busy, so they're useless for the kingdom of God. Don't let that be you. Start today. Live simple. Helps make things easier when you have less that you have to keep up with. And in some of our cases, we just need to lower our standards a little bit on what we think has to be perfect because it doesn't matter. People aren't going to remember as much of whether or not you had a few dishes in the sink as they are that you took time out and sat with them. Let them cry on your shoulder and you pray with them because they're having a major crisis in their life instead of saying, no, you can't come over right now. You know, we're, I'm kind of busy or the house isn't just right. That doesn't matter. What matters is doing what God would have you do. And that's what this kingdom life is and dominion life is. It's about going everywhere and changing everything we see into the likeness of our Father's kingdom. And setting the captive free, no matter where we're at, and no matter what that captivity looks like. So, you go live that dominion life. And, if you're watching and you need healing, put your mind or your hand where you need that healing. And in the name of Jesus Christ, be whole. Now you go do what you couldn't do. And we'll see you next time.